The fight in Delaware for parents to opt out of a certain standardized test is not over yet. This is the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to the Delaware Way. The Smarter Balance Assessment Test that's linked to Common Core, the curriculum, has been a source of controversy in this state for some time, so much so that in Dover, the legislature there voted to allow parents to be able to opt out of taking the test. However, the governor vetoed that bill. The man who is trying to override that veto and so far has not been successful is Representative John Kowalko, who is back to the show. He's a Democrat from the 25th District. Um, the people that are against the Smarter Balance Assessment Test look at you and say you're leading this effort to override the veto. What has happened so far? In a veto override, you have to have a three-fifths vote, but you also have to have the bill placed on the floor for a vote. Uh, I didn't see a way of doing that with the current uh, position of leadership, uh, Speaker Schwarzkopf, putting that bill on the agenda uh, just at my request. So I made an effort to uh, uh, suspend the rules, which requires a simple majority on the floor of the House, which would have allowed us to consider that bill uh, for a veto override attempt. Do you give oh, up no, now? I, no, I, I requested and it was uh, granted that the bill be put on the ready list. Now, the ready list sometimes is, uh, is just a, 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 the funeral home before you get to the cemetery, <laughs> but, but it's still alive. I mean, it's still, it's still a life support. Do you give it much hope? And when you say, life support answers the question. You don't give it much hope. I don't give it a lot of hope because of the current leadership and their, their and their willingness to, I believe, put their imprimatur of approval on the governor's veto message. Which, and, and most of these people actually voted for the. That's the what veto. I was going to get to. When you I'm take the, polls in the state, parents are for the bill. Oh yes. Overwhelmingly for the bill, they want the ability to opt mm -hmm. out. When it came up for a, a vote in both chambers, in both houses, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It gets to one man, the governor, and he says no. And now everybody caves? Well, I think that's what's unfortunate about the politics in Delaware, is that we have a, uh, everybody said we have, you know, quote, unquote, a blue state, a, a Democrat state, a Democrat-run state. And when we have a Democrat governor who does not uh, believe in the, uh, I think, the legitimacy of the separation of powers, and this is important, separation of powers, the General Assembly overwhelmingly, over 70 percent, passed this bill for him to veto it and not allow or cajole leadership into not allowing a veto override, uh, I think is, is, is somewhat of an irresponsible move on his part. Well, it, it's not his fault, though. It, it wouldn't be his fault. It no. would be the leadership's fault, right? Exactly. Because for you going along have, with what he wants. Yes. You have he's to have allowed complicity. to say, I want this. You, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, the complicity is, 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 is ranging throughout the entire debate. And that, to me, bothers me because uh, the uh, the caucus, the Republican caucus, I'll be honest here, they, they have uh, notoriously been against any suspension of the rules votes for sometimes legitimate reasons. At the end of the session, we have a lot of suspension of the rules for, for bills that probably should have been brought earlier and wouldn't require a non-committee hearing, let's bring them right to the floor for a vote. So they've always said and voted no against suspension of rules. And I sent them a personal letter to everyone in the General Assembly that I would not be asking for a suspension of rules if it wasn't such an important issue that we owe to the pe people, to the parents, to override this veto, or at least attempt to override this veto. So when they vote, they en masse voted against suspension of the rules. And then maybe an hour later, they voted for a suspension of the rules for the Delaware Compete Act. The anger that you're seeing across the country <laughs> playing out in this presidential election this is a microcosm of why people are angry, because they want something, mm -hmm. their legislators vote for it, and then it doesn't happen. And it doesn't happen for sometimes the worst of reasons, partisan politics or, as you're saying, rules. And they have a right to be angry, don't yep. they? Oh, I think so, absolutely. Uh, the one thing that I, that I intend to keep pursuing, and that is engagement of the public's rights in our General Assembly. And by that, I mean that every time we have a chance to take a vote, cast a vote publicly on a bill, we should be doing that. We shouldn't be hiding them in committee. We shouldn't be putting them in desk drawers. We shouldn't be putting them on a ready list and not allowing them to the agenda. We should be insisting. We should be insisting that we have a vote on the floor, up or down. If you don't want to vote for the veto override, whatever reason, it's, uh, that's your privilege. But not to allow a vote to happen, uh, to me, that's an abuse of power. I want to move on to a couple of quick Certainly. things. As the gas tax to start off mm -hmm. with. Uh, there's this talk again, it's, it's reappeared, the, the possibility of a gas tax. It is a bill that would uh, increase the, the cost of gasoline by 10 cents mm -hmm. with 10 cents going to the state. Are you for that? 
I'm not for it in that context. And I'll tell you a couple of reasons. One, number, number one, the gas tax is a regressive tax. But I can overlook that part of it if it is going to be dedicated to the trust fund, the, the transportation trust fund. It is not written into that bill that that's where the dedication of that revenue will be. If it filters over into the general fund, then we are left with the consequences of we are easing our burden on the June 30th budget balancing day without consideration of what we need, and that is infrastructural uh, improvements. If that were in the bill, you would be for it? I, I would probably be likely to support that, uh, even though I think that it should be determined, at, at, not at the pump, but it should be a, a general excise tax on gas. It should be the, the formulation to, to get that kind of revenue. We have to take the operating costs out of the transportation trust fund that were misplaced and put in there to ease our burden of a June 30th constitutionally bound balanced budget. We have to take some of those operating costs out of the transportation trust fund, put them back into the general fund, and then let's balance the transportation trust fund on its own. Because right now we're playing this shift shift of money with one everything hand to the other. it seems like that shift of money oh, happens no, they, they, all, all they, they, the time and it seems like there's always quick fixes and now you have dupont leaving which is going to call, cause some more problems jobs. you're not going to be getting some some of the tax money you were mm -hmm. talking about and yet my our next guest on the show will be talking about a cut in the corporate income tax yes and i and i disagreed i voted against that cut in the corporate income tax and and i'll tell you and i can predict this i've already heard from other people say well you know the the fact there's 1700 layoffs with dupont and they'll get severance packages will be a temporary increase in our revenue because there'll be a higher pit accumulation personal income tax accumulation for those who have got severance packages if, if you want to believe that that pie in the sky is somehow a solution to hunger world hunger i'm going to tell you you better look at your at your at your crystal ball and predict something better than that because that is not a stable solution. It's not a sustainable solution. It's not even a wishful thinking solution. And, and it, it bothers me that we're doing And it's also another quick fix. If, if, if you're talking about a tax on severance pay, what's that, one year? That's it. Exactly. That's it. And, and the story, uh, the, uh, we do that infusion of cash uh, throughout a lot of our revenue uh, sources in Delaware. We, we do that with the Ashit tax. We do that. Things that are not predictable. And they are one time, and they can grow one time, and they can shrink one time, and we're always left with this uh, bouncing ball that we can't seem to get a, a handle on. You know, we're always double dribbling, and that's not that's not the way to do things. That's not the way to run government. Thank you, sir, for coming in. I don't envy your job, Representative John Kowalko, Democrat, 25th District. As I just said, coming up is the finance director for the state. He'll be talking about that cut in the corporate income tax. I'm sure we'll hear a different take on it. Also about the future of fantasy sports online in the state of Delaware when we come right back with the Delaware Way.